Your ancestors, the great sages, said to let all your actions become duties in the positive sense. Actions become duties when you are, understand that you are really doing this action for another, for your wife or child or neighbor or country or for, you, or for humanity or for somebody. Actions become duties when you accept the responsibility to do them. If you think this person is my wife, so I should do certain things for her, then any action you perform with that awareness becomes your duty. Unfortunately, then you think that your duty makes you a slave. That's the mistake. It's not taking on the duty that's the problem, is that you that we then can easily allow it to make us a slave. I've known housewives who felt burdened by the pressure of their duties. And when I say, why don't you sit down and have a cup of tea and relax, they protest. I have to go home. I am married. The children will come home from school soon. I have to be there. So they feel they are acting under the pressure of their duties all day. And when you feel that, then your duties make you a slave. Here is an impasse. You cannot live without doing your duties, but then you feel like a slave. There are several points to remember, Swamiji says. First, you cannot live without doing duties. And then, secondly, you always receive the fruits of actions. Third, you cannot live without doing your duties. And fourth, the wrong attitude towards your duty makes you a slave. Then how can you be free? There is one important skill that you need to learn to be free. You create everything out of a desire for love. You always create an act for some person. You think, I wish my husband loved me, or I wish my wife loved me. She never expresses it to me. Sometimes people get divorced because the love is not expressed. Many times both people are wonderful. Why does one couple, couple live together happily when another couple does not, although they are good people? None of you know how to really express your love. You create and act for love your whole life. There is no animal or creature who does not crave love, and love means attention. Meditation, too, is attention. Without attention, you cannot meditate. The word meditation comes from the same root as medical, and that is the way a doctor should attend to his patient seriously, lovingly, and selflessly. So you create and act for love all the time. The most ancient language in the world is the language of love. This language doesn't lie or misinform or distort the world, unlike the other languages we use for manners or politeness. The words of other languages become empty those, worlds have, those words have no heart or love. As we indicated earlier, as you perform your actions and make them into duties, your actions will make you a slave unless you do them with love. Learn to grease your duties with love. Love is the one thing that can help keep you from being a slave for your duties. You can learn to create with love. Love is a creation of human beings. It does not drop suddenly from the heavens above. The highest of all human creations is love. Love is consideration, caring, sharing, surrendering, and giving. Love itself means giving. Whomever you love, decide one important thing, that you will not hurt that person through your mind, actions, or speech. There's an experiment that I like to practice with that and like to suggest. And that is sometime run an experiment. Choose one person. Just choose one person in family or that you know. Choose that one person. Think of that one person and make an active, conscious decision. I will never, ever, under any circumstances, do or say anything that will harm that person. And watch what happens. It's an incredible experiment. Because you, then you'll see that all of a sudden something's about to come out of your mouth in reaction to something. 
and you catch it. But you're doing it with one person, and maybe it has a spillover effect on everybody else. It's an amazing experiment to do with pick, to pick one person, to just say, with this one person, under no circumstances, no actions or speech or even internal thoughts are permissible that could harm this person. Non-negotiable experiment. Quite an, it's quite an experience. Ahimsa, nonviolence, is the expression of love. They are one and the same. Learn to express learn, love. Learn to cultivate that attitude towards others. And remember, ahimsa means non-harming. Ahimsa doesn't literally translate as love. It means cause no harm. And the byproduct of that is love. When there is no harming, no pushing against, then what we discover is the love that's underneath it. We all have homes, and our homes are meant for our inner spiritual experiments with ourselves. Our homes are laboratories, and when we learn something about love in our homes, then we can go out and do useful things in the community and the world. But if we fail at home, then we really fail. And there is still another home, a personal laboratory within yourself. You are learning to live with others, but how can you really live with others when you are not happy with yourself? You are not happy because of your desires. You do not know how to attenuate those desires. You should have desires. You cannot become Swami, sannyasis, or renounce, renunciates renouncing all your desires. Renunciation itself is not so important. What is important is learning to live in the world yet remain unaffected. No matter who you are, whether you're a Swami or an ordinary man in the world, you should learn the technique of living in the world yet remaining unaffected. Do not forget that this life is only a journey and you are a traveler. I am A seeker should think, I am only a guest here in this world. A guest cannot afford to be absurd with the host. What right have I to misbehave or to be greedy? I am on a journey and I must complete my journey. This life is like a very crowded procession and you have to see that you don't hurt anyone and neither are you hurt. To achieve that, you must learn to be skillful. Learn the skill of performing your actions yet remaining free from reaping the fruits. That is accomplished when you cultivate the attitude of love. Often people ask how long it will take for them to be liberated. And I answer, Swamiji says, one second. The whole world could be liberated and happy in one day's time if all human beings decided to do something very rational and logical. If I perform an action, I am bound to reap the fruits of the action. And if you do an action, you are also bound to reap the fruits of your action. We are not caught by our actions, but by our fruits. But if I do my actions with love for you, and at the same time you do your actions with love for me, then we're both free. Human beings have not learned this skill. Humanity has not learned to do things for others selflessly and lovingly. That's why the sages say that love liberates, and that love is real knowledge. Learn to do things for others because learning to act in this way liberates you. When you learn to do things for others, there are four aspects to the process. One you learn to give. Two, you learn to love. Three, you learn to be free. And four, you learn to follow the law of karma. If you do not learn this process, you cannot ever attenuate your many desires. 
as we noted earlier, all the strains of your negative emotions arise in some fashion from the primitive fountain. You need to learn to understand these primitive fountains and their effect on you. In order to do that, you need to learn to observe your mind and to counsel with yourself. Observe your mind, one, and two, counsel with yourself. Then you can be free of the burden and unhappiness created by your desire. Have exa having examined in some depth the issue of desires, let us return to the discuss the role of samskaras. Now we're getting down to what's that other missing piece, the particular samskaras and habit patterns of each one of us. 